it's Paula with Hillbilly Orchids. I want to let y'all know that my channel is sponsored by the Orchid Supply Store. It's your one-stop shop for anything you need A to Z orchids. Use the code Hillbilly for a 12% discount. Thanks for dropping by, y'all. Hey, y'all. It's Paula with Hillbilly Orchids. Welcome back to my channel. Um. I'm going to continue talking a little bit more about catacetums and their care. Now, yesterday, or well, actually it was Wednesday, we talked about, I gave you the general, um, what I'm doing with them right now in my environment. Now, also, see, not only this year I'm changing things because I'm allowing my temperatures to drop. This is going to be a new learning curve for myself also. So, I'm going to be learning, you know, rereading these guys after having adjusted already to how they are were growing before when my environment stayed warmer. So, and the Pervianum here is probably a good indication of that. Now, the parvianum has been a little bit of a pain in the bazooka anyway <laughs> honestly uh, as you can see all of the buds blasted rasa fresa fresa raza blah 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 <laughs> so let me scoot this guy back we'll bring him forward now I don't know I don't think there will be any more come on that spike I really don't so I will stop watering this plant. Um, now the thing of this one is though, even in even when the conditions were warm, this plant never wanted to go dormant, whether I quit watering it or not. So <laughs> this one has been quite a difficult plant for me. Actually, both of these have. Now, reason being, let me let me move these catasandras. Parvianum. Uh, was a gift to me from Bobby Jeffries at uh, Cloud, Wars, Cloud Forest Vibes um, a few years, I don't know how long ago now, probably cannot read the tag. <clears throat> um, when he sent it to me, he had it on a mount. Um, he wasn't sure, it was sold to him as a uh, Catacetum Shunkia. Well, when it bloomed, it definitely was not a Shunkia. And I will see if I can find the actual bloom pictures when this bloomed for me and um, put them up for you to see it. Uh, we kind of just deducted between everybody in the catacetum communities that uh, it, was a, it was a parvianum of some kind. It's definitely a, a parvianum. But this plant, he even said, even on a mount, this plant would never go dormant for him. And I thought, you know what? I mean, like, a, a mount is a big step for a catacetum type um, because they do require all that moisture in the summertime and that would be a hard thing to have to actually keep up with being it on a mount. So I went ahead, took it off of the mount, I divided it, split it and sent part of it to Stephen Van Camp and Lewis and then I kept the other part and this is what it did for me after dividing. Uh, she sent out two brand new bulbs. I kept this part here. Um, but she had sent out these two new bulbs this year and uh, the one just recently spiked. Well, I'm, you know, like I said, I don't know. As of now, I don't know exactly 100% what happened with this plant. It normally blooms fine for me, but this year, since I've dropped my temperatures, maybe this plant don't like that. I don't know. Maybe this plant don't like being watered when it's that cool. So these are things, these are learning curves that I'll have to go over next year with this plant. Probably what I will do is, is that Thanksgiving, I will try stopping completely watering this plant and I will let it go dormant then and see how it goes. This plant might be a total one-off for me that it's going to have to be one that goes dormant and there's nothing else I can do about that if I ever want to see this plant bloom again. You see what I mean? Sometimes you have to make adjustments. 
uh, it's like today when I was reading Michael's video, or Michael's video, in my video, I was reading Michael's comment. His, um, Rebecca Northern, it went dormant early because of Hurricane um, Ian. Well, or Ian, or however you want to say it. Um, it went dormant early, so, uh, and he said that his put up small bulbs because of that. Well, see, he had to make an adjustment because of a hurricane, even. So, things happen with catecetum that, this is why I tell you, it, it is, you know, some things can happen that you can make mistakes, like I just did, and it will be a whole nother year before I can do anything again. Now, possibly, since I'm going to stop watering, I'm, I'm going to stop watering it now, I'm going to let it dry out, and... I am going to see what happens. This plant could very well spike again. It's got it's got a lot of reserves having put out two bulbs this year. Now this is this plant's not it's not a big huge catacetum, so those are pretty decent bulbs. And if you look, it did it did really good. The bulbs got bigger than the last year's bulbs, so you know there it it did did quite well. So it really could have enough reserves to want to put out another spike, even though this one failed. But we're going to do it with dry medium this time. So you see, I'm going to choose to not water this plant now. That's my choice. And we're going to follow it up and see how it goes from here. So we shall see if it, uh, yeah, if it blasts now, if, they, if it decides to put out another spike, or, you know, we're going to follow the progress of this one. It could be a whole other year before we figure out what we need to do with this plant. But that's where... Like I said, these catechisms are not simple. They're not hard though either. I don't want you to think, oh gosh, I don't want a catechism because they're hard. You just have to live, learn, and read what they're doing. Now, yes, I've made that mistake for this year. Something happened. I'm going to readjust it. And it could be a whole other year before I figure it out. Might not be. So, you know, time will tell. We'll just have to kind of go through the motions here and see what happens. Now, the catasandras, that's a whole different story as well, too. <clears throat> okay. Now, when I bought the catasandra, um, now, catasandras is a cross between, and I always do this. I should have done this before I, <laughs> before I started the video. It's a cross between a galleandra, bowery, or is it a galleandra? I'll put the cross up on the thing because I always forget. I'm sorry, I do. But it's a cross between a catacetum and a galleandra, um, which galleandras uh, bloom out straight out the top. They don't spike out the sides like catacetums do. So this one as well spikes out the top. Now, when I bought this plant, it, it came, it was huge bulbs. And. I failed. I absolutely failed. It came covered with spider mites, so I had to fix that, which in turn costed me my leaves on most of the plant uh, because I treated it vigorously to get rid of the spider mites. And um, so I tried, uh, I think I can't remember that end of that year, I think I let it go dormant or whatever. Now, the following year, when it started it started its new growth, um, I messed up again. But, I mean, I followed... What I did was I kind of followed along with my other catacetums. So, it put out the new growth, and it had roots. It had a few roots, which most of them, you know, you can do with a few roots as long as they reach the bottom of your, of your pot. Um, you're good to go with watering. Well, this one was not that way. Again, I messed up. I watered too soon. My bulb rotted and I had to save it. So I went into save mode and it wound up putting up the next year two small, small, small bulbs, almost like plug size bulbs of what you'd buy new brand new catacetums at right now. So basically, these guys have started all over again. 
Now, I've stopped watering these guys because they're going dormant. You can see they're starting to go dormant. These guys will not bloom this year. These bulbs need to be twice this size before they're even going to even consider putting out a spike, I'm sure. But in the process of it putting out these little tiny bulbs, one of the rotten bulbs also did this. It put out a teeny tiny, teeny tiny, uh, you can hardly even see them there. It put out a teeny tiny little growth there, and it was a little section of a bulb like that big. And it did throw out a growth, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to see what it's going to do. And it did put out a bigger growth this year. That is the new growth this year. Now, I'm going to see, this is so super tiny, and this is just me fiddling around with this, because I do have two great plants here that, you know, if this one doesn't do anything, it's no harm, no foul. But I'm thinking, why not? I'm going to mess with this one and see. Now, this plant is completely dormant. Um... And I am going to, I'm going to leave it to go dormant. I'm going to wait and see what happens. Um, I might, might repot it up because, like I said, I just kind of threw it on this because I really wasn't expecting this plant to do anything. But it really did do a decent little, I mean, it is a teeny tiny bulb. But I'm going to see. I'm going to see if it's got enough energy to put out another growth and start again. Why not? You know, she did do this much, so there was enough energy in that bulb to put that one out. So, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to give it a whirl. But, with these guys, this new bulb way surpassed this bulb, which is good. Anytime your new bulb doubles or triples past the size of your previous year's bulbs is good. So, you know you're on the right track. What I had to do with this plant last year, or actually this beginning of this summer, I had to allow this plant to go longer without water than my other catacetums. So I was already watering my other catacetums and this one was waiting. All of these roots, you see them, um, I did not water this plant. I held out and I held out and I held out and it paid off for this plant. Now, for some reason, and I don't know what it is, I can't tell you for the life of me why. All I know now is, is that I know how to handle this plant. When it goes dormant, it quits watering. Because if I don't, if I water this plant, it will fuss and rot on me. And I need to leave it go longer to gain more momentum in the root area before watering. So that is my ideal plan for the catasandras. So do you see what I mean? Each of the catasetum types in the genus, they're all different. And they bloom differently. And the blooms last different amount of times. Then, you know, it just all depends upon what kind of plant you have in the general. You know, um, like I said, in cooler temperatures, they will last a little bit longer because, you know, heat will zap them and drain them. So... Yeah, I mean, it just, like I said, it's, they're, they're all different. And I do, I do enjoy talking about them because everybody does do them kind of differently. And it is to each individual's own accord as to how they care for these plants. But they are guidelines. They're not fast, hard rules. They don't, you know, like I said, if I would, if I would lose these plants completely if I went hard and fast with the rules. I mean... It just, I would lose them. I would not have a catasandra, which, you know, and it scared me because catasandras are, they're kind of rare. They're not, you don't, they're hard to find. They're hard to, you don't usually get to buy them. But yeah, I'm like, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, here, I'm going to, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to kill it. So I had to revamp everything and redo, um, you know a care plan for these guys in order to try to save them because I would like to keep this plant in my collection um, so yeah I mean but you see that's what I'm saying there's two fine examples right there as to you know the different types of care that things happen and you you have to make adjustments um, but these are your more fussy type catacetums if you're new into catacetums 
I really suggest some of the good old standbys like um, like Wine Delight, um, Fred Clark After Darks, uh, which like, you know, my Fred Clark was fussy this year. They can all tend to be fussy. That's, you know, like I said, Bud Blast comes on for a multitude of different reasons. You can't ever really put a finger on it or a thumb on it. Um, cause me and Brenda was still talking about that. You know, she thought maybe it was because I did lower my temperatures this year and it could have been, <laughs> who knows? We will probably never figure it out. Just like the Parvianum. I don't know why those blasted. That is a good, uh, is a better indication because now I had some of the, t uh, Fred Clark's blast and the Parvianum blast. So Catacetums, don't, they don't really like cold. They're usually dormant pretty much when it's cold. So, yeah, so there you go. But, um, again, I hope I didn't confuse anybody. And if, please, 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 if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. And uh, with that said, I appreciate all you beautiful, wonderful people stopping by and hanging out with me. And bye for now, y'all, till we meet again.